All right, today I want to talk about the second project uh, in your SIM book for Excel uh, in Chapter 3, and it's called Independent Project 3-6. Uh, in this particular project, we're going to be working with a company called Courtyard Medical Plaza. And Courtyard Medical Plaza is a, a full-service medical office complex that provides customers with a variety of medical services all in one location. And for this project, we're going to create charts that illustrate data uh, about the number of procedures performed at uh, Courtyard Medical Plaza, as well as how patients come to the facility. In this project, we're going to be doing several things and covering several skills, and among those are uh, auto-filling month names. We're going to be using the sum aggregate function in the spreadsheet. We're going to create a column chart sheet using the move chart command. Uh, we're going to add and edit chart elements within the chart itself. We're going to add and format a trend line in the chart. We're going to insert a text box uh, shape in the chart, and we're going to display gr grid lines in a chart, and we're going to use gradient fill for a chart object. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded the start file and renamed it to the convention that we're using. So it's my initials, the word Excel 3-6. So we're ready to begin this project, so let's start with step number three now. So we're on the patient count uh, spreadsheet, we're on the tab here, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be selecting cell C5, which is here, and we're going to be completing uh, the months here in the series by copying using the fill handle. So let's select the fill handle and copy that across to M5, and that completes the uh, series for us for the months from January to December. All right, next we're in step number four, and we're going to complete the totals in N6 through N10, and B10 through M10 using the sum function. So we're going to uh, come first of all into N6, and then I'm going to select the formulas and auto sum function sum, I'm going to hit the enter key, and that's going to put the sum of the totals for each of the months here along this row in that cell. Now I'm going to click back in the cell for N6, and I'm going to copy that down to N10 using the fill handle, and that's going to bring that down. And then <clears throat> what I'm going to do next is go into uh, B10 and select that particular cell. And then I'm going to come back up to auto sum, select the sum function, hit the enter key, and that's going to sum the values in the January column for us. Now I'm going to select back into B10, and I'm going to use the fill handle, and I'm going to drag it across and copy the formula all the way across to um, B10 to M10. All right. And so when I did that, that is completing it. We've got the pound symbols there uh, because the um, values are larger than the cells that they're currently in, but we're not going to worry about that at the moment. We'll fix that here in a second. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to select all the values uh, that we just created here in this array. So I'm going to select B6 and drag that down to N10. And then I'm going to apply a comma style to those. So I'm going to go up to the Home tab and click on that, and come into the Number group and select the comma style here. All right, so now we want to take the two places past the decimal point on these figures, and we want to decrease that to eliminate the decimal points. So I'm going to go to the Decrease Decimal and click it twice to eliminate the decimal points. Okay. All right, so now we're at uh, step 4B. We want to auto-fit columns B through N. So let's select column B with the down, black down arrow and left click and then drag that across to N and release it. And then we're going to come up to the Format button under the Cells group and we're going to select Auto-Fit Column Width and then click out of it. All right, so that takes us up through 4B. All right, so now we're at, st at step number five. And in step number five, we're going to create a clustered column chart sheet. And it's going to be named a Medcare. 
Uh, and since we're creating a chart sheet, that means we're going to be using the uh, move chart command uh, and move that chart to its own cell. So we're going to select uh, the following cells to create our clustered column chart. We're going to select A5 and we're going to drag that across to uh, M5. All right. And then while we're holding the control key down, we're going to select A7 and select across to M7. And then we're going to release both of those. We're going to come up to the Insert tab, and we're going to select the clustered column chart and click it. All right. And so that's going to create uh, our clustered column chart. Now we're going to move that uh, using the Move Chart command button and that's under the location group and we're going to click on that and then we're going to select the new sheet radio tab radio button rather and we're going to select uh, as a name for this particular chart imed care all right and then we're going to click okay all right so that creates an imed care tab and so we're on the imed care spreadsheet and we're looking at the uh, clustered column chart we just created uh, in that step number five. Now it's important here at step number five that we ensure uh, that this chart is exactly the way it should be and we need to look at the uh, uh, instructions and go back and make sure that everything that's in your chart is showing in the chart in the diagram. If it is, it's probably okay. Uh, but we need to make sure that all of these are completed correctly because if not, then it's going to impact further grading um, with the other steps that we complete in this project. And it'll just cascade through the grading issue here for us. All right, so now we, it looks good to me. So we're going to now go up to step number six and we're going to edit the chart title here on this chart that we just created. So we're going to click in the chart title and then triple click and select all of it. And we're going to type in immediate care patient count. All right, so immediate care patient count. And, and then we're going to click out of it. All right, and now in, we're up to step seven. We're going to click uh, the chart elements button, and we're going to add uh, a linear trend line to the chart here. So let's go to the Chart Elements button, and we're going to come down to Trend Line. I'm going to select it, and we're going to come across and click a linear trend line. All right, so now we're at step number eight, and we're going to format this trend, li trend line. And so we're going to double click the trend line to open up the um, trend line task pane. So let's go to the trend line. And let's double click on it. And that opens up the format chart area uh, area for, uh, for that trend line. And now in the forecast group, uh, we're going to set the forward value to 12. And so um, let me go to, all right, I went back. Uh, I didn't double click the trend line somehow. I just double clicked the chart area. So I needed to double click the trend line. So you need to make sure you do that yourself. Uh, be careful about doing that. So we had the wrong task pane that come up. So now we're looking at the format trend line task pane, which is what we should be looking at here. And so we're going to be, we're at right now um, at step number eight and A. And so we're going to come down into the forecast group here uh, in this task pane. And we're going to set the forward value to 12. So this is the forward value area. And so we're going to click in there, and we're going to replace 0 with 12. And then we're going to set the uh, color here of the trend line to olive green accent 3. And so now we're going to come up to fill and line, and we're going to come down to the color, and we're going to select the olive green uh, accent 3, which is here to color the trend line. And then we're going to set the width of the trend line to four points. It's currently set at 1.5. So we're going to use the up arrow and just toggle it up until it reaches four points. Okay. 
And so we've reached that now and we've changed the width of that. And so now it's important at this point that you have added only one trend line. So you need to check your trend line option. Uh, when I pass my pointer over it, it says trend line one. If yours says trend line two, then you're going to need to right click on that and delete it and then go back and complete step eight again. All right, so I'm only showing one, so everything worked out for me. All right, so now we are at step number nine, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and close the format trend line pane. So let's just click that X there and close that. And in step number nine, we're going to insert a text box in the chart, and we're going to draw a text box between 300 and 400 grid lines, and we're going to type in some information in there. So uh, there is a figure in your sim book, figure 3-73, that you can use uh, to follow along with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, Format tab, uh, or rather the Home tab, and I'm going to select, um, let's see here, I'm going to click the Insert tab, rather, so let me do that, and then I'm going to go over here to the Text uh, area under the Symbols group, select that, and select Text Box. And then I'm going to come down to the 300 to 400 uh, pixel range or grid line range and I'm going to so that's between here and here and I'm just going to select and draw a text box in there release it and then come back in here and what I need to type in here is the number of patients who come in for immediate care services make sure immediate care is capitalized will continue to grow. All right. Uh, and then looking at the um, diagram figure, rather, 3-73, I need to reduce the size here of this uh, text box to about right there so that we have three lines with continue to grow on the third line. You'll need to uh, do that yourself and check that. So now it's between the 300 and 400 grid lines, so we should be okay here. All right, so we're up to step number 10 now. And in step number 10, uh, on the procedures count worksheet, uh, let's go back to procedures count worksheet, click on that. Uh, we're going to select cells A5 through D16. So let's go from A5 and select through D16 with the selection uh, uh, pointer. And now we're going to create a clustered column chart object uh, and we're going to use the quick analysis tool to do that. So let's, this is the quick analysis tool, so let's click it and let's go down to charts, select charts, and then let's select the clustered column chart um, object that we're going to create here. And uh, so let's click that, all right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move that chart uh, to its own chart uh, table, or chart sheet rather. So let's click Move Chart, and then select the radio button for New Sheet. And we're going to name that Procedures Chart. All right. And then we're going to click OK, and we're going to move that to its own chart chart sheet. Okay, so now uh, we uh, it says here in the directions that ensure that you have to have accurate grading that you must complete this step uh, properly uh, and so you can compare your step with the uh, information in your diagram in your uh, sim book. Mine looks okay so I think I'm fine here and so now we're going to, I'm going to move on to step number 11 but you need to make sure yours is correct before you move on to 11 because it will impact the grading. All right, so now we're going to edit the chart title to display a specific name. So let's click in the chart title, triple click it to select all the information, and we're going to type in number of procedures. On the first line, and we're going to hit the enter key, and then we're going to come down and type in three year period, three years hyphenated. Okay, uh, on the second line. And now let's click out of that 
to save that title. And now we're going to move on to step number 12. We're going to add primary major vertical grid lines here. All right, so to add those uh, primary major vertical grid lines, I'm going to click into the chart. I'm going to select the chart elements button, select the grid lines. It's already checked, but then I'm going to check the uh, click the arrow to the right, and then I'm going to select the primary major vertical box to add those, and then I'm going to click out. All right, so that added those primary major vertical grid lines. And now we're going to format this plot area. And so to make sure that we're in the plot area here, uh, what we can do is uh, let's click in this area here and let's click on the Format tab of the Chart Tools. And let's select the chart area here. This is the Chart Elements drop-down, rather. And let's select the Plot Area. And that will ensure that we're in the plot area. And you can see that the plot area has been highlighted for us. All right, so we're going to format that plot area. We're going to apply a tan background to darker 10% fill. So let's come up to the shape fill in the shape styles group, select it, and let's come down to tan background to darker 10%. All right, so tan background to darker 10%, and that uh, fills that area in the shape fill. And now we're going to apply a gradient shape fill. So we're going to choose a linear down great fill, uh, uh, gradient shape fill here. So let's go up to um, the um, shape fill and let's select it. And then let's go to gradient and come down to linear down and select that. And so that applies the linear down. Um, gradient shape fill here. All right, so that completes the project and let's go ahead and save the file and let's close the file.